Joining us now to discuss is co-founder and CEO of Amboss Technologies, Jesse Schrader. Welcome, Jesse. Thanks so much for having me, George. So, Amboss just raised $4 million. Congratulations on that. But I must ask, what is it that you do over there at Amboss? What's the elevator pitch? So uh, what Amboss Technologies does is uh, provide a Lightning Network Explorer. So really, we're, we're mapping the Lightning Network. Uh, right now, there's uh, over 17,000 nodes on the Lightning Network, and, and more are joining. And uh, w what they're doing is actually creating a decentralized alternative to traditional payment networks. Right. So... What's the plan for the funds you've raised, right? You've, you've built this platform, you and your co-founder. What's the plan now? What's the path forward? So uh, for for us, uh, we'll be uh, continuing to to monitor what's what's happening on the Lightning Network and deliver uh, key data analytics to improve payment reliability. Uh, we'll be deploying uh, resources into machine learning to really optimize uh, the reliability of payments in the Lightning Network. Um, in this whole map of uh, of this payment network, uh, Amboss acts like ways uh, to crowdsource information. It, and it acts like a navigation app for uh, for payments that are going all over the world, all over the time, at a fraction of the price of traditional payments. Right. I think it's a pretty clever way of putting it. But I must ask: in the the funding announcement press release, AI is mentioned, right? And so when I see AI, I automatically have an alarm bell go off and say, "All right, is that grift?" Convince me and the listeners that the mention of AI here isn't just grifting by using the latest tech buzzword. For sure. Uh, now, like AI is is one of the tools that will be used to tackle uh, data analytics. Uh, really, our, our focus up until this point has been on collecting data. If we have good data, we'll be the leaders as far as uh, delivering better insights on how to how to make this payment system work. Right. Uh, okay. So I want to ask a somewhat pointed question for what some people use a Lightning Network for. So privacy is pretty bad on Bitcoin unless you really know what you're doing. And some people point to the Lightning Network as something that is a good way to preserve privacy. So how does Amboss's mission to incorporate this social layer and the literal identification of Lightning Network nodes work in concert with that desire to maintain privacy in the Lightning Network? That's a fantastic question. Uh, and one thing that uh, always comes up when we're talking about privacy of payments is uh, if we can look at the alternative, uh, if you use a payment card anywhere, uh, that information is going to be hopping from provider to provider. Now, like that doesn't happen on the Lightning Network. Uh, payments are routed through Tor, like the, the Onion Network. Um, and and there's a completely different privacy profile. Uh, one indicator of that is just looking for the amount of transactions that are happening on the Lightning Network. And nobody knows that number. Uh, there are individual uh, wallets and, and companies that may know the amount of transactions, but no one has a holistic view of the entire network of payments. Uh, these payments happen between uh, peers and it, it really is a truly peer-to-peer -peer decentralized finance uh, layer, decentralized payments layer. Uh, so it, it's very difficult to find out if a payment was actually made or not. Right. Okay, so Jesse, we're talking about Lightning in, in the broader sense, but I want to pull it even further back. When is Lightning Network's moment coming? We've been talking about it for such a long time. It feels like I'm a believer in the Lightning Network. Some people are not believers in the Lightning Network. When are we going to have meaningful penetration where I can just go down the street, get a coffee, and, and use the Lightning Network in my everyday commerce? It's, it's a great question. And uh, like what we're monitoring is really... Uh, let's see, we, we watched like the, the Bitcoin... Uh, get started. We watched a uh, blockchain take off. We watched an ICO boom. And I think it's time for Lightning Network to be the, the next phase of things. Uh, so really moving into that medium of, ex of exchange layer. Uh, what we're already seeing is that uh, prices are going up everywhere and people are paying a whole lot more than they're used to. 
And when we look at traditional payments, uh, people are paying, you know, two to three percent in addition to the payment processors. So we're we're looking forward to really disrupting that. When uh, on the Lightning Network, what's considered a high fee is 0.1 percent of a payment instead of the two to three percent. Gotcha. Uh, did you have a chance to attend Consensus or Bitcoin Plus Plus last week? Any takeaways? Uh, I didn't attend either of those, uh, but uh, one of our team members uh, participated in the hackathon at Bitcoin Plus Plus and uh, took away the the prize at the hackathon. Oh, nice. Congratulations. So last question for you real quick, very open-ended. What are you most excited about when it comes to Bitcoin and Lightning? And you can't say Amboss. Uh, what over? Uh, I would like to see more uh, community adoption. Uh, right now, we're seeing uh, Bitcoin Jungle in Costa Rica really take off. Uh, they're they're having more merchants onboarding onto the Lightning Network uh, than the wallet provider can really meet and get a good sense of of who all is using the Lightning Network. Uh, we're already watching uh, Bitcoin Beach, uh, but there's a lot of. Uh, onboarding onto the Lightning Network in in Asia, as well as Africa. Right, that's exciting stuff. Well, congratulations on the raise and and best of luck going forward, Jesse. Thanks so much, George. That was Jesse Schrader of Amboss. 